Hello everybody, the next plane off the pile is a Stanley number 148 match plane. Let's take a look at it. This is one of the rare occasions where I actually got my hands on a plane that doesn't need a whole lot of work. Stanley made three different versions of the match plane. The easiest way to tell the difference between the three is to look at their handles. This one is marked 7 8 the other two are 3 8 and 5 8 They're called a match plane because they will cut matching tongue and groove on boards for doing flooring or anything else that you need to use tongue and groove for. The tongue and groove is accomplished by using two irons. You can see them there, one on the left and one on the right. The plane has two handles because it has to be worked from both directions in order to form the tongue and the groove. This iron cuts the one quarter inch groove and this wider iron cuts a tongue on a board anywhere from three quarter inches to one inch wide but I think seven eighths is the ideal. The plane is nine inches long and Stanley made them from 1905 to 1958. I was one year old then. Based on the trademark on the iron of this old girl she was made closer to 1958. It's cast iron and nickel plated and the nickel on this one is nothing short of spectacular. It's going to look great when it's cleaned up. It's time to break her down. And with the old girl broken down, it's easy to see how this old plane works. The frog is cast into the main part of the body and machined for the iron to rest on top of it. The irons are held in place by two lever caps that use screws through the top of them to tighten down on the iron. And then all you got left is the irons and the screws that lock the lever caps in place. First thing I'm going to do to clean this old plane up is some simple green and a toothbrush. Deep sink, hot water, rinse it off and dry it. So the scrubbing's done. There is a difference. I don't know if you can see it. Next I'm going to use the wire brush and some 4 out steel wool to kind of shine up the nickel plating again. The wire brush I'm going to use primarily to get down into these recessed portions of the handle. And pretty much anywhere where there's some type of corner that it's hard to get my big fat fingers into when I use the steel wool. Next it's on the 4 out steel wool. Going to lightly buff over top of all of the nickel plating. And that brightened her up just a bit. There's only one place on this plane where the nickel is polished, and that's on the back side and the top of the handles. They're a little bit dull, so I'm going to take them over on my buffer and clean them up. I use a polishing compound on a soft wheel for this job. And there's how the handles look after they've been buffed. It wasn't aggressive, I mean it was just light and it polished them right up really nice. And next it's on to the small parts where I'm going to use a dental pick and some folded and layered sandpaper to clean up the screw slots and then they're all going over to my uh, wire wheel. Not much to do here with dental pick. On a lot of these screws they'll be packed full of crud. You want your sandpaper layered thick enough to fit the slot tight. And on this nickel, I'm primarily using the wire edges of the wheel to polish it up. It's not aggressive at all. And with those small parts cleaned up nicely, it's on to the irons. But first, I want to show you something else. My next video is going to be a special one. It's going to be on one of these planes in the background. I'm going to give you a preview of what it is right here. It's at number 81. It's a scraper. So stay tuned for the next video because like I said it is going to be special. And back to the irons. The first thing I want to do is clean up the outer edges using 150 grit paper on my sanding block and sanding stick. The large iron has one machine edge where I can get my sanding stick flat on it and just clean it up. You can do the same thing by rocking it until you find the flat side back and forth on your lapping station. Both sides of the small iron are machined. Same thing, lapping station or sanding block. What you do not want to do is change the width of this iron because then your tongue and groove is not going to fit right. So it's got a slight indent on the sides. They're not perfectly machined flat so the sanding stick works real good to get in there and get that. The edges of the large iron that are not machine flat, the uh, worn out old sanding sponge works real good for cleaning it up. The back sides of these irons are not machine flat. 
steel wool will work fine on them because they're not bad. You could use your sanding sponge if it was needed a little more aggressive. I can use this steel wool and when I'm done I can still see the, uh, the, the bluish tone from when they tempered the irons. And that's what I want. I want to keep that. If you're not worried about the original uh, machining marks on the front sides, you can take it right straight to a lapping station. Otherwise, I can use my sanding stick and hold it perfectly flat and run it in the same direction as what the machine marks are. After that's done, my old worn out sanding sponge and then a little bit of 4 aught steel wool and it's cleaned up good, not looking like brand new, but the original uh, machine marks are there. And next I want to sharpen the irons. Just like a regular plain iron, the back sides are important. You want to make sure that these areas right here at the leading edge are perfectly flat. I do that on my lapping station. And with the backs flat, both irons go on my general number 810 plain and chisel sharpener. And it's at about a 30 degree angle. I can see and feel the wire edge that runs all the way across the front of the iron so I know that I've got it sharpened properly. And I'll finish the sharpening on both irons using 1000 grit paper. The irons are sharp, all the small parts are clean, and it's time to put this old girl back together. And there she is, looking good and all ready to be put back to work. Definitely a fine looking old plane, look at that. She says, I'm looking for a good home and somebody that's going to make tongue and groove with me. Here's a look at the back side. And the business end is looking really good too. But before I take the old girl on a test drive, I want to show you this Sergeant equivalent of the Stanley plane. Sergeant made the 1068. And just like the Stanley, this old Sergeant has two handles and two irons to make tongue and groove boards. And just like the Stanley number 148, this Sergeant number 1068 has a quarter inch iron in there, so it will do quarter inch tongue and groove. The old Sergeant's been around a while, and as you can see, the nickel plating is almost completely worn off because you can see the copper underneath showing through. That old Sergeant plane is a project for another day. It's back to the 148 and looking at how it actually works. Let's talk about the tongue first. Here's the end of the plane and there's a picture right there that shows you exactly how the tongue is cut. I think a picture is worth a thousand words. And here I've got the plane switched over to the other side to show you how the groove is cut. And there's a picture that's worth a thousand words. And while pictures might be great, nothing as good as taking her for a test drive. For this test drive I'm going to use 7 eighths of an inch thick walnut. This piece has got a lot of figure in it, so it should be challenging. Looking good so far. The figure wood is a bit of a challenge, but I think this old plane is up for it. front and rear handles are great because I can use that front handle and really get grip on it. and it's not taking off any more wood. So that's it for the groove. Now it's time to cut the tongue. And 
just like the groove, the tongue is going to stop automatically when it's deep enough. And I'm not getting any more shavings, so that means that we're done. And when she's all done, you end up with some nice looking tongue and groove. And if I hadn't assumed that my boards were straight, and I jointed them first, I wouldn't have had to use clamps to pull them together so I could show you what the joint looks like. The old plane did make a substantial pile of shavings. So the old 148 performed quite well, but I'm not so sure I'd like to do an entire house worth of hardwood flooring. That would be a lot of work. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. We, we, we already took a preview of what's next off the pile, so I highly encourage everybody to make sure you watch that next video because this is going to be a good thing I'm going to do. Well, thanks for watching. It's time for supper. Gotta go. Bye.